In this video, we're going to create realistic looking reflections and use other editing techniques to take this aurora landscape from here to here. Hey everyone and welcome again, Michael Volshinovich here. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uh In this episode we're going to be editing this amazing Aurora image and uh, we're going to focus on things like creating and matching reflections, sharpening, color adjustments, and uh, we're going to stretch this image out a little bit at the bottom down here as well. So um, before we get started, I just want to give a big thanks to my friend uh, Nagesh Mahadev for uh, letting us work on this image, and hopefully I didn't butcher his last name too much. Um, but be sure to check out his fantastic collections of landscapes uh, at the link below in the description for this video. Uh, they really are fantastic and definitely worth a look. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, we're going to basically what we're, we're after is we're going to go from this original image here, we're going to take it to something like this, and um, and essentially, you know, we, we're going to extend the bottom down here and do a bunch of things to it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. So jumping over to our original image over here, we're just going to uh, start off with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch down the bottom over here so that we can essentially, we see that this reflection kind of starts at this point. Um, so we want to be able to take this upper portion here and up here and kind of include it in the image as well. So uh, essentially, we're going to go to image canvas size and uh, we're just going to anchor relative to the top point here and I'm just going to take it up to 18 inches let's say not 1800 that's gonna be way too big 18 okay there we go so that's gonna just fill that in with whatever color there next thing we're gonna do is um, essentially because we don't have kind of a, a consistent base down here like if we had like one solid color we could just kind of drag that color down but we don't really have that so I'm just going to actually use um, some of Photoshop's uh, little nifty tools here, which is Content Aware Fill. I'm just trying to create sort of a selection down here that um, is going to en en encompass a little bit of the top portion and just basically get rid of that bottom portion for us. So we're going to go to Image. Uh, we're going to go to maybe not Image. Where are we going to go? Edit Fill. There we go. That's what I wanted. So we're going to fill that in. I'm um, just select Content Aware. Now that's available uh, CS5 and onward, I think. Click OK, and it's going to do an OK job of filling this, um, but we're going to have to do some touch-ups on that, uh, which is OK. We don't need this to be terribly accurate because we're going to be applying the reflection over top of that. So, um, you know, as long as it's, there's just something there that looks like water, that's really all we're after here. So, as you can see, um, it basically tried to stretch through this this aurora over here, which um, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, but not quite what we want. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this image temporarily here. We're going to create, uh, we're going to select our clone stamp tool at about 29% opacity with a blend mode of darken. And that's that's important, just make sure you have darken selected in there. Uh, and we're just going to kind of sample some of this this black over here and just fill in that uh, green. Essentially, we, again, we don't have to be terribly accurate over here because um, our reflection is actually going to kind of cover this, this portion up. I just don't want any um, stuff in here that really isn't there. So let's just kind of cover this up roughly and quickly. Again, don't have to be terribly accurate with this. So um, we're also going to take care of a little bit of this bottom portion. Actually, most of this we can leave because this will kind of encroach down on this bottom portion as well. So again, don't have to be terribly accurate here. Just kind of sampling from all over the place. And that should be good enough, actually. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly just kind of straighten this out. Uh, so we're going to use our crop tool. We're going to select our straighten option at the top there. And we're going to pick our point from there in the horizon line to there. And that's just going to straighten the whole thing out for us. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to crop our image down and that's our good starting point. So basically now we're sort of ready to start working on some of these reflections and really uh, getting going on this image. So next thing we're going to do is uh, typically what people do with reflections is they'll essentially just, you know, take the, uh, the selection tool, rectangular selection tool, create um, a selection at the horizon line. We're going to hit Command J to duplicate that and then we essentially kind of just flip that over. So if we hit Command T 
and then take this and drag it down. You know, we sort of get this reflection, and then you, you can play around with the opacity, um, align things, and so on and so on. Now, in this case, I don't really want to do that because what, we're, what we see that happens here, if we just kind of apply that transform, we see that we're taking away a lot of this detail from the water here. And really, all we want to reflect is just the brightest portion of the sky. We don't really want everything else reflecting because it's not really, a, this stuff isn't really illuminated enough to reflect. And we see that this water is not quite clean, and that's probably why we lost a little bit of the reflection here, is that the water, unfortunately, was moving a bit. So um, we're really only after this portion here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this. And we are going to uh, go into our channels. And as you can imagine, um, the green channel is probably going to be pretty good at isolating this top portion here. And that's sort of the great thing about auroras is that uh, they're green, so they're easy to select. I mean, if we see, if we go to the blue channel here, it's kind of a mess, right? We've got it all mixed in with the sky. Red is not too bad, but if we go to green, we see that that, you know, that aurora really sticks out there. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this uh, channel. So we're just going to drag it down to the new layer over here. Then we're going to hit Command L to do some levels adjustment. So I'm going to just take down the black point here so we can really make everything else other than this black. We're going to bring up the white point so we, we make the actual aurora itself stand out a little bit. And then we can further kind of just take down um, the midtones. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint black uh, against the uh, against the mountain itself here just, just a little bit. I mean we can, we're going to tighten that up more later but I just don't want this to be in my selection at all. So I'm just gonna quickly, you know, roughly brush that out and that's that's gonna be okay there. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit, uh, actually, you know what, one other thing we can do since we're here is we may as well fill in the bottom because we're never gonna actually want um, the bottom anyway. So we're just going to hit, uh, since our foreground color is already black, we're just gonna hit option delete and that's gonna fill that in for us. So now we basically just got this aurora portion and a little bit of the sky there that's going to be in our selection. So hitting command, we're going to create a selection there. And then we're going to just tap down on our layer to get back to our RGB channel. And we're going to hit command J to duplicate that. So now if we uh, sort of toggle these layers off, we see that basically we just have our aurora selected out. So now we're going to hit command T. We're going to um, flip vertical. And we're just going to drag that aurora right down. And now, obviously, we can see that, you know, the, the nice thing is we do have a reflection here. So we're not completely, you know, making things up. We're just trying to essentially punch this reflection up. And the great thing about having, you know, some sort of reflection already is that we have a guide. We have something that we can uh, use to shape our uh, copied reflection over uh, just to make it look, you know, fairly realistic. So essentially, um, it looks like, you know, we're going to, it doesn't really matter what reference point we pick, but I like this little curvy point here. We see that that's kind of duplicated there. So we're going to use that as our sort of source point. And uh, so we're going to sort of drag this over like that. This is obviously going to have to stretch vertically quite a bit. So again, that's going to line up there, maybe just a little bit less. Then we're going to stretch this out to the side. And you know, it's, it's hard to line everything up absolutely perfectly, but we see that we're getting pretty close. And then if you want to just kind of finalize things, what we can do is we can use our warp tool to really just kind of get them in there. So we can just grab here and, you know, make some, some minor adjustments just to get things looking nicely aligned. And that actually looks pretty good. So we're going to hit enter on that. So we basically got sort of the makings of our reflection here. The first thing obviously we're going to want to do is take down the opacity a little bit because that's just unrealistic that it'll be that bright. And then we're just going to apply a layer mask so we can take out stuff that we don't really want. So we're just going to set that up there. We're going to select our black brush at about 30% flow, uh, maybe even a little bit less than that. Make sure it's a soft brush too. Your, your hardness should be at pretty well zero. And uh, we're just going to brush away the stuff we don't really want. That's not what I want at all. Sorry about that. So we know that this part is a little bit hazy, so we're just going to kind of brush away there. And uh, I think we do have a little bit in the sky here. If we just kind of toggle this on and off, um, we see that you know these parts here we don't really want that showing. So we can really just brush all of this away. Some of these stars actually I don't mind leaving, so I'm just going to let those stay there. And then just to kind of finish things off. Uh, what you can do is you can just lower your flow down to something like 10%, you know, shrink our brush down, and we're just going to kind of, you know, randomly soften up certain areas uh, so that, again, it just looks a little bit more real because you would never get like a perfect reflection in your water. So we're just going to kind of brush away certain bits. 
and then you know, just make that transition there a little bit smoother. So that's essentially what we're after there. Then that's a, I think a good starting point. So um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to maybe adjust the color of this a little bit. So if we notice that this one is quite um, dark, quite a bit darker than this one. So the next thing we're going to do is just um, hit Command U, and that's going to bring up our hue saturation. And we know that because this water is reflecting some of the sky, which is blue, we're going to actually add a little bit of a blue tint to the water itself. So I'm just going to drag my hue over a little bit, and then I'm just going to lower the lightness and then maybe increase my saturation just a tiny bit as well. And I think I'm going to drop the opacity on that a tiny bit too. So now one thing we'll also notice if we kind of go in this is that this water is kind of moving. You know, we see that we've got some, some directional lines over here. We've got some directional lines going this way. So we're going to try and replicate that within our reflection as well. And we can just do that by making sure that our reflection layer is selected. We're going to go to Filter, Blur, and we're going to go to Radial Blur. And just make sure that zoom is selected. And we're going to pick a point. I mean, it looks like it's kind of radiating out from more or less this middle point. So we're going to, we have our horizon line in the middle now. So we're going to uh, essentially pick from the middle and then slightly offset. Uh, looks about like, you know, 10 or 12 was a good number here, but again, you'll have to experiment depending on the resolution of your image. So we click down on that. It's going to take a second to actually do something. And there we go. And then you, we can see that if we sort of go before and after, it's just softened it down a little bit for us. Um, you know, just to kind of replicate some of the murkiness of the water there. And then obviously you can adjust this opacity to taste, you know, however bright you think it should be. I'm thinking that somewhere in around 50% is going to be pretty good for it. So now uh, we can move on to making this image look even cooler by applying some additional adjustments to it. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just adjust some of the colors a little bit here um, just to uh, to punch up I think the sky and uh, just bring out some nicer tones overall. So we're going to first off go into our hue saturation, uh, sorry not hue saturation, we're going to go into selective color here and we're going to play with our greens a little bit. So with green I think you know if we maybe punch up um, the cyans just a little bit here I think that's going to look pretty nice. Um, let's take down our magenta a bit. So, you know, we see that we, if we do that, we're going to just bring out some more of the green here. So I'll maybe take that down about six. And then yellow, mm, uh, maybe just a little bit. I don't want to go too much on that. Now, with, I think blacks are going to give us some good effects over here. So if we select blacks, uh, we see that we've got, you know, some varying shades of black. And overall, it looks like there's kind of a nice blue tone going on here. So if we want to play that up, what we can basically do is we, if we take yellow down, we see that we're going to introduce more of this sort of blue cast to the whole image. So I'm going to take our yellows down to um, probably about minus six or so, just to give it a little bit of a blue tint. And then uh, I think maybe cyan's might look pretty good. Yeah, so as we can see, if we push that, um, that does look pretty nice. So we're going to take that down to maybe plus, plus three, plus four. Um, that's a little too much, I think. Let's go to plus two. That's good. And then um, I think we can introduce a little bit more black. So I'm probably just going to go to one there. So that I think is a good starting point. And then all I think I really want to do with this image to take it a little bit further is to uh, apply some sharpening to it. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, essentially duplicate, we're going to create a stamp visible layer. So command option shift E. Then I'm going to hit command shift U to desaturate that. We're going to select soft light. And then we're going to go to filter and high pass. And we're going to select a radius of about 150 pixels or so. So as we can see, that really kind of pulls out a lot of the detail in the sky. And it's, you know, probably a little bit too much. I would, what I don't want to have happen is that this, this aurora gets sharpened too much. Now, the good thing is that um, we do have a selection of our aurora already. So if we go into here, we see that this already represents our aurora. So maybe we don't want to... Um, have that all get sharpened. So what we can do is we can just reselect that and we can add our layer mask over here. So we're just going to add layer mask and that's basically not going to, it's, right now it's affecting just our aurora, which is not what we want. So we're going to hit uh, command I to invert that and now we see that we've got you know less of an effect on the aurora itself but it's still sharpening a lot of other stuff. Now we're going to further uh, play with this layer mask a little bit. So I'm just going to take our um, gradient tool. We're going to select foreground to transparent option up here. So we're going to have black as our foreground color. And essentially we're going to just kind of drag up from 
the bottom here. That's not what I want. Drag down from the bottom, from the top, I guess, in that case. Let's go that way. So we don't really want to sharpen the, the actual bottom portion of it here because, you know, the water itself is murky. So we don't really want to apply any sharpening there. Really, we just want to sharpen some of this sky to bring out uh, some of the detail in there. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more uh, layer of sharpening. So Command Option Shift E to create a stamp visible layer. Then we're going to go to um, a linear light filter high pass again. And we're going to take this radius down to probably about, you know, 1.7 or so. And we see that that, again, just applies a little bit of sh uh, subtle sharpening to our image. And, you know, again, if we, we find that we don't really want to apply it down at the bottom here, uh, we can just create a layer mask and then we're just going to gently layer mask this out of here. So I think, uh, you know, I'm going to do something like that and that's just going to uh, soften the effect on the bottom, but keep it fairly good on the top. So I mean, maybe usually it's a good idea to lower down uh, the opacity of any sort of high pass filter sharpening uh, to about 50% or so. And that just, you know, it's really minor, but it does give us a nice sharpening effect. So that is pretty much it. Um, as you can see, it, it doesn't take a lot. And, um, you know, it really does make a big difference uh, between the original and the final image where, you know, we've applied some of this stuff. And um, it, there's lots of other techniques that you can use. I mean, for example, with this one, I, I went a little bit further on it. And um, I brought up the sky here. So if you do want to make some additional glows, and it really depends on what kind of, uh, you know, photographer you are sometimes, um, people feel that it's not really appropriate to you know, brighten things up in certain areas that, that really you know, weren't there to begin with. They want to keep it as pure as possible. Um, then you don't have to go through this step. But if you want to, for example, add a little bit of extra glow here, we can just add a layer. We can select a color. Um, let's say our glow is, you know, in and around uh, this sort of purplish glow. We can bring it down to a fairly dark shade. And then we're going to select a blend mode um, of linear dodge here. We're going to just pick our brush tool and just, you know, make it a, a fairly large, fairly soft brush tool, maybe um, flow of around 30%. Just tap down, hold shift, and drag that across. And then we can add a little bit of colorization there, maybe a little bit of glow there, you know, wherever you feel that is uh, that it's going to help. And then we can maybe just take down our opacity at the end just to, um, you know, less than that effect. So it really depends on what kind of photographer you are. Some people don't like to do that, but if you want to uh, just stylize it a little bit more, that's another good thing to do. So as always, I uh, hope you found that uh, tutorial useful, and uh, we do put out tutorials about two or three a month, so if you uh, want to make sure you don't miss any of them, just be sure to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook. That again is uh, facebook.com slash vibrantshot, and we'll see you next time.